Would you like to meet Sammy? I would. I would like to meet that guy. I mean, I, if he was open to it. I'll make sure I'm there with you. Just okay. <laughs> Maybe we could do it over pizza or something, because I like pizza. Yeah, he'll be but, all right. No, Sammy's I, a good guy. I like, I like to meet him. I, I've always been, I wanted to meet him years ago, and then just out of curiosity. But what kind of guy is he? I mean, I don't know. You know, he's unique. I mean, there's no question. I mean, we're friends now. We get along great. Right. It's a great family, the whole thing. But he's, uh, he's hardcore within that life. And he's, uh, I think he would enjoy meeting you. He may call you out right away. Sure. <laughs>
to play him, but you know, not it didn't quite quite turn out the way I would have liked. There were some good things in it, but you know, they made me wear wigs. We couldn't curse. I had another guy who was playing Gotti, who really wasn't right for Gotti. So there were a lot of constraints that yeah. go with it. I mean, I even said to De Niro, I look ridiculous with these wigs. I got real hair. Why not? At parts, they used my hair. They dyed my hair. So there was a lot of things with it. Then the funny thing was all these guys in the movie, they were all getting hired for this little show at the time. No one knew. Turns out that show happened to be maybe the greatest show of all time. Sopranos. Yeah. Yes. All these guys There's were like... There was a lot of Sopranos guys in there. I know... Uh, Michael Imperioli. Imperioli. Uh, Louis um, Lombardi was in there. Uh, Lombardi. Uh, let's see. Uh, no. Uh, wasn't he? Vinny Pastore was Vinny in Pastor, it. Vinny Pastore, yeah. And uh, who else was in it? Sirico was in it. There was right. a whole bunch of them. And, um, Which are all great actors, by the they way. They were all great They're actors. Great. I mean, Michael was a really, really good actor. And, you know, the Sopranos, I mean, people were like, well, how come you never... I go, I really wasn't right for that show because a lot of those guys, other than Michael and, like, James, who was incredible, but a lot of those guys are great at what they do, but they're faces. Mm. You know what I mean? They have those faces that I don't have that face. I'm not, I'm not a face. I'm more of a... I'm more of an actor. I'm more of a, you know, like Michael is a really good actor, I think. I think those guys are great, but I'm just saying they're more types. So, like, if I'm going to go up against a guy who's a type, they'll say, well, Nick's a great actor, but we're going to go with Mike because yeah. Mike has that look. You know, with Sammy the Bull, I thought, you know, I was kind of onto something with the character, but I was never really allowed, I think, to, you know, like I say, the scripts were not... How did, you, how did you prep for that? Did you know anything about Sammy? Or did you, did you, I read his book. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of <laughs> wannabe guys around. It was quick. I didn't have a lot of time. And I kind of, you know, I was doing it on the fly. And De Niro was watching all the, the dailies, and he would call me, and he'd say, you know, it's good, it's good. He would never say it's great. He'd just mm -hmm. say it's good, it's good. He would, he would be like, you know, watch when you point the gun. These were like acting notes. I was like, huh? You know, like the recoil, I was like looking for like, you know, a note from the great actor, one of the greatest, but he would be like, watch John Gotti's accent, Nick. I said, well, Bob, he's from Michigan. It was Tom yeah. Sizemore. Yeah, Tom It Sizemore. wasn't like if I had done it with the movie that you like, but that guy was a great Gotti. And so I had, I had bounced off of him in an HBO movie where you could curse, where you could have a better script. I'd have a better shot, I think, at doing... I mean, there was some good stuff in it, but there was also a lot of things that maybe didn't feel as real or believable. Yeah. But, you know, that happens. You yeah. never know. Like, I did a movie one time. It's called The Hillside Stranglers. I played a psychopath, and the guy left me alone. It's not a great movie, but the performance is off the wall. Mm -hmm. You know, and a lot of people didn't see it. They were like, but you were nuts in that. I go, yeah, because nobody got in my way. You know, mm -hmm. something like this, I was kind of, like, boxed in, and I always felt like I could have done so much more with that. But, you know, not everything you hit is going to be out of the park, no, you know? I know that. I did a little movie years ago called Federal Hill, which I don't know if you ever saw, but you would like that, I think. You know, the mob kind of movie? Kind of like a mob movie. I wouldn't call it a mob movie, but the mob was an element of it. It all takes place in this town that you probably know in Rhode Island. Yeah. Raymond Patriarca yeah, sure. ran. It was called, you know, Federal Hill. Yeah. And, uh, and that was a good little movie that we did out of a brown paper bag. And I got nominated for a Spirit Award, like Independent Spirit Award. Best Supporting Act or whatever, and it was a good little movie. If it had been a bigger film, it could have helped my film career, because at the time I was getting making my bones on television, mm -hmm. you know, so I was more of a TV guy, you know, but I had done movies, but, you know... What do you like better, Nick? You like movies or TV? I like both, but I really like television because I can make a better living, and mm -hmm. uh, it's steady, you know, and I was on a great show, and then you think... Oh, it's going to be like, you know, it's going to get easier, but it never did. I mean, I had a few pilots after that, comedy pilots, because people saw me in some comedy movies and they said, Longest Yard. Yeah, you were, you were Longest great. Yard. And people great were like, in that movie. Thank you. Yeah, well, really. Sandler let me be funny. And mm -hmm. uh, he kept adding stuff to me, adding. That part, Michael, was nothing on the paper. I had one line here, one line there. And then I came in with a character, and my brother goes, You watch, if he sees you're funny, He's going to run with it. So he kept saying, have the Toro say this, have the Toro say that. It was, was great. Like, and it was great. It was a great experience because then so, the part became like magical because he's so fast comically. He? Oh, he's quick. He's like, you got to be on your toes. You know, it's like guys like that, it could be a little intimidating, but if he sees you're funny, he's not, he's not intimidated by that. He'll let people shine. You know what threw me about him? Uh, his recent movie, Uncut Gems. 
He was brilliant in that movie. Brilliant. I didn't think he had that in him. Oh, know? he does. Old comedy, I thought, but no, he was great. Yeah, he's got a, let me tell you something, he's got a dark side to him. Does he? Yeah, he does. <laughs> he does. I mean, everybody does, especially, you know, comedians, but a lot of comedians, some of them are not really great actors, and some of them never become really good actors. He, he's got acting chops. Yeah, no, he's That great. guy, that, that performance is, that's off the wall. I saw it like six, seven times, and I was like, Holy mackerels. I mean, I was like yeah, he was great. really blown away by how good he was. I even texted him. He was like, ah, thank you, Nicky, you know, whatever. Yeah, well, at I mean. first I wasn't going to go see the movie. I said, ah, Adam Sandler in a serious role. But we went, man, he blew me away. Really yeah. terrific. Yeah, he is a, he's a heavyweight. I mean, he's no joke. I mean, you know, John has worked with him, my brother, who's brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, John likes him a lot. And uh, I mean, I, I love Adam. He's a good guy, too. I mean, there's a lot of guys in this business. You know, they're not always what you think they might be, but Adam is actually, good he's guy. a good guy. I mean, he's got a, you know, he's got a temper. A few times he might get mad, you know. I mean, one time he told me, can you try an accent, try an accent? Right on the spot, I had no time. So then he was like, no, 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 forget that, forget that. Just go back to what you, I was like, okay. So he's <laughs> giving me time to maybe prepare. You know, and that's the thing, like you say, Sammy the Bull, if I had more time to prepare that role, if I had met Sammy Gravano, yeah. I really feel like, you know, maybe he doesn't like it. But I don't, I mean, I still would like to meet the guy, but just out of curiosity. But what kind of guy is he? I mean, I don't know. You know, he's unique. I mean, there's no question. I mean, we're friends now. We get along great. Right. He's a great family, the whole thing. But he's, uh, he's hardcore within that life. And he's, uh, I think he would enjoy meeting you. He may call you out right away. Sure. <laughs> I wouldn't mind. But take it's okay. It. I can take you can it. handle it. What's I can the difference? take it. You know, listen, yeah. not everybody's going to love everything you do. Even the great ones have been in some movies that people Absolutely. don't love and do love. I mean, you know, I mean, there's some, you know, there's some stinkers by, you know, what was it, that movie that De Niro and Sean Penn made years ago? It was not very good. Oh, yeah, I know the one. Yeah. They played priest. Yeah. Well, you know, I had the pleasure of, uh, I, had, I had met De Niro very, very briefly a long time ago. He wouldn't have remembered, but... Um, we were at Tribeca with Chaz this past weekend, right? And they uh, they showed the Bronx Tale again. You know, they redid it. I don't know what on they the call big it. screen. On the big screen, and That's I think exciting. they're going to release it again June thirtieth. But uh, then him and De Niro did a, a Q and A afterwards. You know, and uh, then as he was leaving, we were going to backstage, and they, they were ushering him out quick, and he ran over and said hello to me. You know, we shook hands for a minute, but. Uh, you know, he's, he's a brilliant actor. I mean, he's oh, he brilliant is. in everything that he does, but... Uh, yeah, the funny thing was, you know, last night, uh, you know, Raging Bull was on. It was late at night. I'm mm -hmm. always up late by myself, and so I'm watching a little bit of the movie. I mean, I know the whole movie by heart, but uh, I'll tell you the truth. Like, some of the scenes in that movie, the quality of the acting is... Oh, it's 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 like it's like they're not even acting. It's like it's, it's really, like, off the wall. And as great as Joe Pesci is in Goodfellas... And in Casino, because he plays the mob guy. I think because he's from that world, you yeah. know, he knew this guy, Joe Denti, all this mm -hmm. stuff. Joe Denti, yeah. But he's so great in that movie. He's got a scene with the guy who plays the old mob guy. It's a great scene. Watch the scene. The guy, Nic Nic oh, Nicholas the scene well. Colasanto, whatever. Yeah. He was wonderful. I know the scene. So he goes, well. he goes what, what, what's the problem? What's the problem? Are you running in a hurry or something? You want to get out of here? And, and, and he's just, he's so constrained, but he's so real. Yeah. You know, he goes, nah, it's just all the problems. He goes, he goes, no, nah, you know, this guy Jake, he's, he goes, you know, he doesn't respect that. He goes, no, 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 he goes, he respects you. He, yeah. But he was so good. He was so believable. Like, I mean, it's so, I mean, as great as De Niro is in that movie, Pesci is as good. Pesci's terrific. I mean, you know, it's a yin and a yang. You need, they had great chemistry. Not always everybody has. You could put five movie stars together and they have no chemistry. Yeah. And then you, he found that Joe, you know, from some obscure movie. I remember it was called Family Enforcer. He actually was in the movie with this guy, Joe Cortese. And Joe Cortese kind of read for that role. There was another guy, my brother told me a very funny story, that they were driving Joe Pesci crazy. They were, test, you know, telling him it was his part, his part. And they had another guy in the wings. I forget the guy's name, Joe something. And Pesci then went crazy, found out, I guess, because he thought he was going to get the part. But I forget the guy's name. I don't know if he ever became anybody, but they had this other guy. <laughs> There's a whole book about the Raging Bull. Because my brother and Mike Bartoluco have little parts in it before he, before he became successful. They're at the table when the guy goes, hey, father, you want to get laid? And John is right there, young John and mm -hmm. Mike Bartoluco. He says, hey, Jake. He's like, he just shakes De Niro's hand. 
because we had met De Niro. They were doing plays. I was a kid. It was in Westbeth, uh, downtown. It was a little play, and my brother goes, De Niro and Pacino are coming tonight. I was a young kid. I go, can I come? And he goes, yeah, yeah, but just behave. I said, all right, all right. I said, I, I won't. I had to give you that warning, behave. <laughs> yeah, he told me <laughs> You go that. way back like that. Oh, <laughs> my God, and I had just seen this movie, New York, New York, and he had this blue Hawaiian shirt on. So I went out and I bought a blue Hawaiian. I'm a kid, and I'm waiting for Pacino, De Niro. Pacino never showed, but De Niro did. And he's sitting right next to me. I was like, in his heyday, and he's got the dimple. He's really handsome. I said, I got to say something to this guy, but I don't want him to know that I know who he is. So I said, excuse me, do you have the time? And he goes, it's about 8.15 or something. And my brother goes, in the second half, let me sit next to him. And he asked my brother, he goes, he goes, do you know that kid or something like that? He goes, I, goes, I think he was checking you out. I said, really? He said, yeah, I feel he probably won't remember that story, but you know, it's funny when you meet well, somebody yeah. and you're a kid, you know, and then years later you're like working for him or whatever. It's kind of like crazy. It is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. hard to believe. Like, well, I will tell you, he was so brilliant in that movie, Raging Bull. Yeah, Raging Bull. He was so, and, and Pesci too. I mean, just they, every scene that they're in. I mean, I remember when he was punching him in the face. Remember, hit me, hit yeah. me, hit me. Yeah. And then when he had the fight with the guy outside by the car, he went after the Pesci. Oh hit my the big God. Guy. But uh, you know what? You know another role that I thought he was brilliant. Pesci's brilliant in everything, mob related. He's and a, even the comedy. He, he just can do it. Great all. comedic. Great, great. Yeah. But uh, in The Irishman, playing Russ Buffalino, he, totally departure from what his normal I, mob character. I agree. I agree because he, he could be great. subtle and he could be really. He's you know, the thing I'm going to say about him is he is truthful. Yeah. He's so truthful, and that's why he's so funny. You know, I almost got run over by his friend one time in the dark, delivering him a script years ago up on Mulham. Yeah. I was trying to make this movie, Bless Me Father, for like 20 years. And Pesci tells the story that I came at 1 o'clock in the morning. It's a lie. <laughs> it was like 10 o'clock. I shouldn't have did it myself. It was at night, and I'm like... Uh, up I'm in walking Mulholland? Up, yeah, I'm walking oh, up God. these gates. So it was dark. <laughs> a car comes running at me, almost ran me over. Turns out, he goes, who are you? And I jumped out of the way. It was Tommy DeVito. I guess like the guy oh, from really? the Jersey yeah, Boys. Yeah, yeah. It was like his henchman. Oh, really? And I said, I, I said I'm, uh, I'm Nick Dottori. He goes, I know who you are. I said, I got a script for Joe. So they, he, so I give it to him. So I'm walking down. He comes out, I guess, in a robe. I saw him from like, behind the gates. He goes, who was that? That fucking kid, Dottori, you know? <laughs> so I ran into him one time, and he pulled like a, one of those Joe Pesci moves on me. He was like, you know, it was, nah, 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 Nick. It was like one in the I said, nah, Joe. He goes, no, nah, no. Nah. And he's still telling people that story. <laughs> My friend will play golf. He goes, you don't believe this kid, the Toro, he came to my house at one in the morning. I'm like, whatever, Joe. I'm not going to argue with you. If you say it's one, it's one. But I love him. I do. I love him. And I think he's... Uh, he doesn't want to work anymore, though, huh? I don't know. You know, he retired from acting. Like, he, he must have made, like, a lot of money or yeah. great investments. And I was sad when he, like, yeah. like kind of quit because I was like, he was so good. I heard that they really had to coax him into the Irishman. He didn't want to do it. But they really had to put pressure on him. I yeah. Guess the Nero guy. What'd you think of the Irishman? You know, listen, it's it's so hard. And I love those guys. Yeah, when you have such a brilliant cast, brilliant director. I mean, it's hard. They were they were terrific. What got it? What didn't work for me is I knew that the story's not true. Right. So I have that in my head as I'm watching the That's movie. That's number one. That's number one. Yeah. The story wasn't true, and that you know was it was made up in that regard. But you know, three hours was a little bit tough quite yeah. honestly, to sit through. But again, their performances were brilliant. I'm not, I wasn't too keen on that aging or re-aging thing, yeah. you know? It didn't work totally for it me. It wasn't believable. Yeah, I thought it took away from them. Yeah, you know? I think they should have just got younger guys yeah. to play them when they were younger and then let them play their, themselves when they were older. That would be more believable because, yeah. you know, you, guy's 75 trying to stomp somebody. And yeah. It just didn't... And, and I'm fans of those guys. I thought the guy that was really good was the guy that played... Uh, who was the other guy that... He's an English guy, but he was like the right age, and he's going at it with Pacino. What's the oh, guy's yeah, name? Yeah, yeah. He, he was, was really good. He, he was great, yeah. But you know what? A lot of people, uh, they weren't complimentary about uh, Pacino's role as Hoffa. I thought he was great. I thought he was wonderful. He was great in that role. He yeah, I thought he Pacino. was. I thought he had some great scenes, and, and the scene he had with Joe Pesci at the end was great. I mean, obviously, yeah. Joe let him. Joe was very... Uh, you know, I, I let think, him go. Yeah, yeah. I think I like. I mean, I, I, I mean, Al is, 
it's hard not to like Alec. You love Donnie Brasco, and I listen to those tapes. You and did. the real lefty guy, he's off the wall, hysterical. Yes. He's hysterical. <laughs> he's now, Johnny Depp, who I love in Black Mass, because he played that evil guy, Whitey Bulger, I thought really. Did you that, like the movie, though? In which movie? Black Mass. I like the movie. Yeah? It's a dark movie, but yeah. I, I like the movie. I, I, for some reason, that movie, even though it's a very dark movie, I actually... See, it's funny you say that. I'm, I'm watching that movie with my wife and understanding where I came from, right, for 20 years of my life. But I walked out of there and I said, it's so dark. There was just nobody there that you cared about or rooted for. And that, you know, I had a, I had a little problem with that. I mean, again, these are brilliant actors, so you never talk about their performance. But the movie itself, ah. Yeah, you didn't love the movie. No, I didn't love the movie. It's not a great movie, but I know what you're saying. It's a, They're weird... They're weird people, and they, the whole feeling about that movie was eerie. Because you want to root for somebody in a movie, you know, you, at least a little bit. You, you do, couldn't. but sometimes it doesn't happen. Couldn't. You know, and sometimes I just like like the work, but I thought he was good as, as, as Donnie Brasco, but I thought the real Donnie Brasco, you know, to, to really get entrenched, tell me if you're not, if you disagree, but that guy, you know, you really... You had to believe that that guy was a mob guy, that, they, that those Italians took him in. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know if he went all the way there. And I love Johnny, but I was listening to, like, the tapes with the real Donnie and, and the guy uh, Lefty. Yeah. Yeah, Lefty. Yeah, and he yeah. played it like a comedian. What do you mean, Donnie? No. Yeah, he kept <laughs> giving him the wrong answer. And then that lefty guy, I mean, I thought Al really kind of nailed the essence of that yeah, guy. he did. But that, the real guy is hysterical. He's, he's very funny. I he, knew him I mean, fairly well. He's you a very, know him? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's a very funny guy. He was very yeah. funny, right? And I said, I mean, I thought, I thought that it was Pacino's best role, not because he really nailed the character, but the, he nailed the, the, the kind of the personality and that, you know, some of the things he said. You know, about the money, you know, two fuzzles up top there. <laughs> yeah. And that one scene in the car, Nick, I cracked up. I'll tell you a quick story. You know, when I was a recruit in that life, I always had a good car because I had a, an agency. So I used to drive in with a Cadillac or a Lincoln. And my boss at the time, Tom DeBella and Andrew Russo, who was my captain, they would take my car and drive where we had to go. And they made me sit in the back. And the two of them smoked, like chimneys smoked. And they would not open the window. Right. So when I opened the window in the back one time, hey, are you killing me with that draft? The same thing. So oh I'm in a theater, I'm watching that, I cracked up. I was the only one that really laughed. And right. I said, what are you laughing about? I thought, you have no idea, you know? It's not right. that they took it from me, but it, it was so realistic. Yeah. Because that's how these guys were. Yeah, because that hit home for you. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah. you know, you could relate to that. When you can relate to something and it's personal, and you know that life better than most people. Yeah. And then when you remember what he said, you know, would they drop you on your effing head in that often? <laughs> yeah. I said I was sent for, you know. It right. was so good. Yeah. It, was so, it was so good. And that's what he was saying on the tapes, the same thing. They're going to send for you. They're going to yes. send for you. He goes, but you're okay. He goes, because I, you don't understand. I spoke for you. And then, he, then he's bringing up the other guy, Sonny. He goes, am I okay with Sonny? <laughs> this is the real tapes. He goes, am I okay? He goes, you're okay with him. You're okay with him. He goes. You're okay with me, Donnie. You know, oh man, it was. But it was like the, you know, there was almost like an Abbott and Costello routine. Yeah, it was funny. I, you know, I I became very friendly with Pistone afterwards. Good guy, by the way. You know, I've told people this. I had a, I had a run-in with Sammy over Joe Pistone because Sammy said, "How could you like that guy? He put all these Italians away." I said, "But Sammy, that was his job." Right. He was an FBI agent. Right. He just did his job better than we did ours back then. That's why all those guys went away. Well, we can't get mad at him. What was his job, right? How long was he hanging around those guys? Six years. Let me, let me tell you something. I don't think people understand how critical his job was. At any point in time, somebody would have realized who he was. If they would have did their work a little bit and found out who he was, he would have walked in their room never walked out again. Right. And so he had to face that. You know, because he knew these guys, they're not dumb. But somehow, you know, he, he did a spectacular job he, because he they must never have. caught on. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm saying, they like, never caught on. that was the part that I was always, like, I think could have convinced me more in the movie that you actually would have, they kind of skimmed the surface a little bit with him. Like, you know, at first he had the jewelry and all that, and then all of a sudden, boom, he's asking just one guy about him. But I would have... You know, you know, I don't know. The, the problem, Nick, is a lot of guys, if, uh, you know, they latched on to people because they, were, they thought they could earn money with them. 
Oh. And they didn't do their work, you know, they didn't really research. Remember he just over and asked the, the barber guy? Yeah, the barber the, guy. The guy in the barber yeah. shop, you know, yeah, hey, you know this guy or whatever. That's not doing any work. You know? No. The guy comes it? out of nowhere, you figure out where did he come from, you Yeah. Know? But I mean, look, I was in a similar situation one time. I had an undercover agent with me for eight months. I, I was under a big uh, uh, investigation, me and Don King. But I never put myself in trouble with the guy. They tried to indict me and they couldn't because I just didn't know where he came from. So I was very cautious, you know. So you were you smart that way, yeah. Well, you know, thank God my father taught me well. Right. Because he was a very cautious, even though he did 50 years in prison, he was cautious. You know, but he never got caught on tape or anything like that. You Your know? dad? No, never. I mean, you know, that was before they really started to use the surveillance, but he never was caught. He got caught later on saying something not good at all, talking about chopping up bodies. But that was way later. later. He already did all that time in jail. He was getting old. He was in his 90s at that point, but you never know. You I mean, know. he was an old school guy, right? Oh, yeah. From Brooklyn? From Brooklyn, yeah. yeah. Well, he, my grandparents came over here in the early 1900s from Italy, from, uh, from Naples. We had 19 kids here. 19? 19 kids. My wow. dad was one of four boys, 15 girls. But my dad was born on a boat trip back to Italy, so he was actually born in Naples. But my grandparents were already living here, so he was naturalized citizen. Otherwise, they would have deported him. Oh, really? Yeah, they would have got rid of him. So he was, was born in Naples? He was born in Naples on they, a boat trip. They, yeah, my grandfather used to go back every year by boat. Right. And they brought him here when he was four? No, he, he was... My grandmother got pregnant here. They went on a boat trip. She delivered the baby there, my father. Oh, okay, okay. And then they came back. Okay. So he always says, I was born in Naples. I said, Dad, but you were five days old when you left, you know? <laughs> yeah. I know. My dad was six when he came from Bari, but that was the first time he met his, his father. His father was here, and then he came on the ship with his, with his mother. And his brothers were all born in Queens or whatever, but he actually was born there. He never went back to Bari. But, and you were uh, raised in Queens, right? Yeah, I was raised the end of Queens near Long Island, a little town oh, called yeah. Rosedale. Rosedale, yeah, I know. Yeah, which is uh, right by Kennedy Airport. Yeah, yeah. Right by Five Towns, right by where, you know, they robbed it and Goodfellas, all those, mm -hmm. the airport and all the back all of those. Uh, Do you remember a place on Rockaway Avenue, uh, uh, the Big Bow Wow? Yeah, in Howard Beach. Yeah, you yeah. remember? I used to go there as a kid. Okay, I used to work there. steak sandwiches. You worked yeah, yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, I worked there. My neighbor... Cross Bay Boulevard. On Cross Bay. Yeah. My, my neighbor owned the place. Oh, my gosh. So when I was working, I was in school, I was working there on the weekends Yeah, for a, a couple of summers. What year were you born? I was born in 51. Uh, uh, oh, so you're like my 72. brother's Ralph's age, 70. My brother Ralph just passed away. He was born 52. Mm. So you're born 51. John was born 57. I'm in 62. Well, you got to, you look great anyway. Yeah. My God. Well, my dad was 103 when he passed. I know. Out. You got some long. We got some genes. Yeah. You got some genes there. Yeah. And I all mean, his brothers and sisters died in their late 80s, 90s. What was your mother's name? Christina. She was a very pretty lady, right? Yes. yes. There's a story that, I don't know, my godfather called the Agostino. I forget. You know, I forget my cousin Vinny was like kind of a street guy, not a maid guy knock around guy and he had told me a story about he had a crush or something on your mom. I don't know where it was in Ozone Park. I don't know where it was. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to get the information to tell you uh, not that anything had happened, but you know, they knew he was she was with your dad or whatever. Yeah, my dad chased everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but he said she was a very attractive lady. Yeah. Blah blah blah. But she was with Sonny Francesi and and my I forget mom, the whole story. If I do, I'll text it to you. My mom was a, a hat check girl at the store club, and uh, my dad used to go in there. She was 16. He was 17 years older than her. But she started oh, right, dating. Older. Yeah, she started dating Montgomery Clift. Oh my God! Yeah. And when my father, you know, got uh, got his eye on her, he chased Montgomery Clift away. So she was actually dating she him. She was dating him. Yeah. And and, well, she, and my dad chased her. He got scared. He left. Wow. That was it. That was yeah. it. I mean, yeah. I mean, he was a wonderful actor. I mean, yeah. Talk about a guy that act with his eyes. He had great eyes. I mean, a lot of great actors were influenced by him. De Niro, a lot of people.
Yeah. Um, Montgomery Cliff, boy, well, you know. Yeah, my father told him, my dad told me, he says, uh, yeah, he, his, in his upcoming movie, he was going to play, he was going to get killed in the movie. So he says, I told him, I'm going to give you a dress rehearsal first. <laughs> Is that what he told him? <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. And that was the end of that. He ran away, you know. Did you was, ever meet Sinatra? I did, many times. Yeah. Many times? The Copa. And then when Joe Colombo had the uh, Italian-American Civil Rights League and he performed once or twice there, yeah. He was a nice guy. I mean, look, you know, he, he had a lot of respect for my dad. When Sinatra passed away, I think it was 98, I'll never forget. I was, it was early in the morning when I heard it, and I was just getting out of bed. And it was like, for me, that's when an era really died. I said, yeah. that's it. Sinatra's gone. It's it. Because, you know, we all loved him. He was like the idol, you know. Right. And, uh, yeah, it was, that was it. I knew them all. You know, you, know, you probably never went to the Copa. You were too young or you were Too weren't? young. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I spent so many, you know, good nights at the Copa with my dad. That was the place. And I met everybody. Sammy Davis, Dean Martin, Sinatra, Paul Anka, uh, Bob, uh, uh, not Bobby Rydell. Who was your, Bobby Darren. Bobby Darren. So talented. Yeah. Oh, Nick. Yeah, that guy played like 10 different instruments. You know what I heard, I heard too, that... Uh, uh, Sinatra would never do anything with Bobby Darren because they said Bobby was an ex-Sinatra. And so he didn't want to do anything with him. Or right? right. Yeah, yeah, that little rival, you get it. Yeah, understand. sure. But just so many things that i that I uh, seen. And What's so Frank's presence? Was his presence like... Uh, uh... You know, it was funny. On stage, that presence, he was so natural, the charisma that he had. But then when he got off stage and he was around my dad and some guys, he was more... Timid, you know what really? I mean? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I noticed that, you know? He's a dark guy, too, Sinatra. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I read his book. I mean, his mother was a character. Yeah. His mother was like, she was the one that had the the balls, you yes. know what I mean? I mean, the father was sort of like passive. Yes, passive guy. She was like a politician or something. I mean, she yeah, she, she was very... In Hoboken? Hoboken. Yeah. Yeah, Hob yeah, they grew up yeah. in Hoboken. He was born in Hoboken. But Frank, uh, I heard Frank was a little bit, like, he loved Dean, but I heard, like, he was a little scared of Dean. Like, like Dean was one guy that he couldn't like. Because he couldn't control him. Right. Dean was like, uh, he was all about, you know, not disrespectful, but you couldn't control that's him. That's why, like, you can't really play. There are certain people that people capture them, whatever, but it's very hard to play, like Sinatra or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, I don't care what kind of great actor you are, I mean, but you really, it's, how could you play him? I know. You know, I mean, I, there's a book about this guy who worked for Frank. I thought that could be... An interesting idea, like he was a valet for Frank. He wrote a book. This, mm -hmm. this guy, Mr. S, and uh, was a black guy, and it was very. That could be an interesting idea, like a guy who was a valet who worked for him all these years. They almost made it into a movie, but they didn't. My brother turned me on to the book. I thought of that too, and another one would have been. You know who Julie Rizzo was, right? When the he got it, his friend, right? Yeah, he owned the club, and then he went on a road with Frank for years. Right. A, a great story there. With, I with thought Jilly? of that, yeah, with Jilly. I, I thought of that because he was a knock around kind of guy, club right. owner, knew everybody. I thought it would have been a good story, but you know, the guy that I liked—I nah, don't say I liked the most—but was Sammy Davis Jr. I do a movie, um, as a matter of fact, funny story. The movie Knights of the City that I did it was kind of a gang type of movie, and Sammy was an old gang uh, gang guy that was giving. Uh, uh, it was kind of a mentor to the younger guys. So Sam, Sammy's in the movie, he wouldn't take any money from me. Wouldn't take any money. So I gave him a gold watch, because you know, he liked all the bling and stuff like that, right? So we make the movie, I get in trouble, I end up going to jail. The government tries to confiscate the movie, because it was a big RICO case. They said it was mob uh, gas money that I put in there. And uh, we get the movie, which was, I mean, right. honestly, we get the movie back and we distribute it. But I go to jail, and as they're editing it, a new producer takes over, and he has a different concept of the movie. So he cut Sammy Davis Jr. out of the movie. Really? Uh, yeah. How do you do that, right? So I'm in jail, and I get Sammy on the phone. I said, Sammy, I don't even know what to say. I said, I'm so embarrassed. I don't even know who. This guy's name was John Strong, you know, producer. I said, I don't even know him. Mm -hmm. I said, they put this guy on the movie. And uh, Sammy was so great. She says, Michael, you're calling me from jail. You got your own troubles. Don't worry about anything. He was so nice about it. You know, just just an all-around good guy. Sammy? I met, yeah, I met him a couple of times. and uh, Talk about nice talented. Oh, oh, my God. God. The guy could act. The guy could dance. 
the guy could play, you know, instruments. instruments. I mean, you're talking about these people, they don't make people like that no more. They, no. they were so talented. These people today are, they're a joke. I mean, I, I say that a lot. I give them arguments with my son. I'm like, you know, I go, I go you haven't lived. I go, listen, I, I, these people were so talented. Never duplicate. These, that, no. that era's gone. No, it, it's, it's over. You it's know, gone. I mean, every now and then somebody comes along. But we're talking about multi talented people, James Cagney, guy was a great actor. The guy could dance. The guy could, even Frank to a certain degree, yeah, he danced. good actor. He yeah, could remember dance. Gene Kelly? He yeah, did that. He yeah, he's wonderful. Terrific. And then, you know, he produced, he did a lot of stuff. I mean, you just don't see those kind of people today. Burt Lancaster, I mean, oh. like, these guys are like, you know, you watch them and you're like, wow. You yeah. know, I mean, you know, when you watched great stuff, you know the difference. You, you can develop good taste that way. I'm not saying, you know, uh, there's not good things today, but things have become so watered down. It's, you know, we grew up like in the 70s. You look at all the movies in the 70s, great movies, great. I mean, you know, incredible. I mean, today it's, they're really killing the cinema today. They're Let me ask it. you this, you know, because uh, it's just come out, it's current. What do you think about the Academy's new rules on inclusiveness in order to have a, uh, a movie, you know, have you heard about it? I heard something about it. Yeah, they're given all of these restrictions and all of these rules in order for a movie to be considered for an Academy Award. It's all about, you know, characters and inclusiveness and people you got to have in the film and, and all that. That's ridiculous. And everybody's complaining about it because they're saying, look, what if, uh, you know, that type of character doesn't work in this film? Right. How do you do it, you know? Right. I mean, you, you can't. You can't be politically correct. You can't gauge something that's creative and that's artistic and then it has to fit a certain criteria in order to be great. If something's great, it's great. If something's good, it's good. Well, you, you know what they said? They said if those, um, if those uh, re rules or restrictions were way back when, Godfather would not qualify. Schindler's Nis List would not qualify. I mean, all these great movies would not qualify under this, these new restrictions and guidelines. It doesn't it's, make sense. It's just wrong. I, I just, I don't, I don't buy into any of that crap. I mean, you know, even now they're having this writer strike. They're trying to replace writers. They tell me with computers or something AI. that, what's it called? AI? AI yeah. I'm like, I'm, I had to, had to ask people, explain this to me, you know, and this writer friend of mine who I just did a sitcom, I said, I don't care what they could write. You're never going to replace the human element. They might be able to spit out something, but yeah. it's not going to beat a human being. Right. I mean, they want to replace us. And this is what it's come to. Is that like, it's really... It's taking it too far. Right? Taking it too far. Talk about the Yankees. So how long have you been a Yankee fan? Uh, since birth. Yeah? <laughs> Mickey Mantle, my idol. I mean, oh, I man. started with that. Uh, you know, I Did just, you see Mickey play? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So your dad take him. you to the stadium? Yeah, yeah. I saw, the old stadium, of course. Right. I saw the greatest game I've ever seen because I love Mickey Mantle. They were playing Detroit at the stadium. He goes back and he makes an overhand catch heading straight for the wall. I'll never forget it. I can visualize it. I close my eyes. And wasn't even looking at the ball. I'm trying to figure out, because we had good seats, how he even knew it was going to be there. He just sensed where it was coming, right, right in his glove. And then uh, he had two home runs that day. And I got to meet him. You know, my dad, uh, it was just, it was the biggest thrill of my life. Mickey was your favorite? I loved him. That's your that's Until your Until today. Right. I mean, right. you know, Aaron Judge, you got to give him credit. The guy is, he's just an amazing player. He right. can do it all, you know. But Mickey, my heart is with him. Yeah. I feel that way about Munson, so because I became a Yankee fan in '73. With Thurman Munson, I love. Yeah, him. and they weren't even that good. And I went to like the old stadium, and then they closed it. Then they refurbished it, and they played at Shea in '74, '75. Mm -hmm. People don't remember that. They're I like, do. they played at Shea. I go, yeah. Mm -hmm. But in '73, I went there. They weren't very good, but I just something about when I walked in the place. I was with oh, the yeah. Boy Scouts, and I was like, wow, blown away. Then you know, I had Bobby Mercer, a few guys, but they mm -hmm. weren't. They were downtrodden for a right. lot of years from 64. I guess they got right. old. And then in their 70s, they were really run down. And then Steinbrenner, Steinbrenner. Hey, got a group together, bought them for $10 million. $10 million. You know, I actually did a, these commercials in 96 for ESPN. And I was at uh, Legends Field doing mm -hmm. a spot with Joe Torre. I was a young kid, you know, whatever. And there were some funny commercials. And then George, they introduced me. This, this kid's on a TV show. He goes, come sit with me. 
So I was sitting with Steinbrenner, I'm like, talk about surreal, like, you know, I'm like, wow, how the hell did I get to me? I'm sitting with Joe, I was just a kid, a crazy Yankee fan, and then here I am sitting, and he was talking about Derek Jeter. He goes, we got high hopes for this guy, Jeter. Mm -hmm. I didn't know, we didn't know he was going to be that good. But they, they put this, together a special bunch, that 90s bunch. But for me, the 70s teams, I, I, that was my, like for you, and Mantle in the 50s, probably 60s. Mm -hmm. Oh, what a team. But Yogi the 70s, Harry, Mickey I love Mantle, Yeah. Kubek, Richardson, uh, There's a great Scowling, Yankee on, that, on the teams in the 60s that I, I wanted to make a movie about and maybe a doc. I'm still talking to his son. He just passed. And I had a phone relationship with Joe Pepitone. Oh, yeah, and, I knew um, Joe. He was at my house. He, he was? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So oh, his he was book a, he was is incredible. He's a wild guy. He's a wild guy. Joe, yeah. you could have made us proud. If you've never read his book, read it. Yeah. It's like it's like almost Raging Bull meets Goodfellas. It's, it's a, excuse my French, it's a great yeah. book, you know what I mean? And, and, and I met him, I don't know how I met him, through the phone. And he took a liking to me. And we talked for like 10 years. Mm -hmm. And he said, hey, Nicky, Nicky, they got a script now. He goes, tell me if this is any good. I said, it sucks, Joe. It's not very good. He goes, I, I trust Nikki. That thing's a piece of shit. And it never got made. Never got made. But the book is great. If they made the movie the right way with the right writer, if it was done the right way, it could be, it could be brilliant. You got to get somebody to play him. You know, I don't know who could play him because uh, he's a big guy. Yeah, big guy. Somebody with like Paul with the hair. Yeah. He's the first guy to brought the hair dryer. Yes. I mean, he was a wild guy. He, had, he was wild. He really, like, he's a kid that never grew up. And he messed up all these marriages, and I think it would be a great doc too. Sure, um, he was a good player. I, yeah, I mean, he was a good player. He, he was a very good player. Yeah, very good player. He was a good center fielder and mm -hmm. a first and a first baseman. Played yeah. with Mickey Mantle, yep. Joe Pepitone. Wow, and we never really met. Everybody's like, "But you know him, right?" I said, "Yes, I know him through the phone." So we never really physically met. But um, sometimes you just have a feeling for somebody, maybe because he was Italian American. Yeah, well, yeah. You know, he came yeah, from Brooklyn. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. How, you've had a, a string of, you had a great career. Pretty good a career. career. Yeah. I mean, a lot of yeah. movies, a lot of TV. What's the secret, Nick? How do you, I mean, is it putting yourself out there? Is somebody noticing you? Because I have a lot of viewers that, you know, you know, I know Chaz very well. And yeah, I've seen A few that. of the guys, and people are always interested in the industry, how to get started, what they have to do, you know, what's the key to success. And you've, you've had, you've done great work. Thank you. I mean, I think, you know, anything is possible, I say, you know, and I think that if you, if you have the talent, if you have the passion and you have, you know, if you're willing to work and you're willing to also take the rejection, um, because there's a lot of rejection mm -hmm. with it, you know, I mean, but I think, you know, you got to love it because if you don't love it, it's too hard to do. It's too, because when you do do it, even to do it well or to do it good, it's really difficult. And then you see people that are great and you're working with them and you're like, wow, this guy is great. And so you realize that it is a craft and it is hard. However you develop it, whether you go to college, whether you do it on site, like I kind of got started late, but I was around it so I had a quick, I was like a sponge, I could pick it up well. But once I got committed, you, got, you can't just be like, well, I feel like trying that. You get, it's got to be more than that. Passion. You know, yeah, you gotta have the passion, and you gotta, you gotta like outwork people. I mean, like even mm. my brother, who was like great. I wouldn't say he's the most naturally talented, but he's a worker. Mm. He even told me that about De Niro directing him in the film. He goes, "Let me tell you why he's so great." And he said, "Nothing, nothing is too boring for him. He could do mm. a scene like this, Mike, uh, in the mic, put the <coughs> thing here. Mm -hmm. Now do it again, John." Mm. Let me do it, John. He goes, the guy is like, he goes, I said, if, you, if John is saying that, who's already obsessed, mm -hmm. this guy's beyond him. He like met his match. Mm. You know, he told me a funny story. He said when he rapped on the movie, he said, uh, he, he, goes, uh, he goes, I'm done now, Bob. I have to be done. He goes, he came into his trailer. He goes, so you're rapped? He goes, yeah, I'm done. And he wasn't being disrespectful. He just said, I'm yeah. done. He goes, so you're done. He goes, yeah, I'm done. So you're going to go. So John goes, yeah, I'm going, Bob. So you're going to leave. Right, I'm leaving. <laughs> he goes, but if you need me, I'll come back. If I need you, you'll come back? <laughs> right, if I need you. Let, just listen to the absurdity of it. So you're going to go. Right, I'm going to go. So you're wrapped. Right, I'm wrapped. But if you need me, I'll come back. If I need you, you'll come back. So this went on for like, it was almost like an acting exercise. Because 
There's a technique that I did when I was a young kid with this guy, Bob Modica, and it's called repetition. It's Sandy Meisner. And you basically have to like put your attention on, say, I'm doing the exercise with Mike. I have to put my attention on Michael, mm -hmm. him and me. And whatever I feel or see, I say, not like something I make up, right. and then you have to repeat it. Like sometimes in the acting exercise, people would say, well, you're angry. Yeah, I'm angry. Right, you're angry. Yes, I'm angry. Yes, you're angry. Yeah, you're angry. And it continues until something it's an happens. Exercise. Right, but you gotta uh -huh. stay within the truth. If you try to bullshit it, this guy Mordecai would be like, that's not it. Stop. You know, like you couldn't like get cute with the exercise and say, Well, Mike, you look like you're enjoying it. Yes, I'm enjoying this. I'm enjoying it, right? You're enjoying it. You're enjoying it. It's moment to moment. So De Niro was kind of doing that, so with, he was John. Doing that with John. With John. It was absurd, you know. He's already an accomplished actor. He's already accomplished. He's a big fan yeah. of his. And then, I mean, he goes, I was being respectful. But he goes, he's like a child. Like, you know, they'll tell him, there's no more camera. There's no more film in the camera, Bob. All right. Keep filming. He's like, you know, he's like my grandson. Like, Santino, that's it. That's, that's it. And I, no, no, Papa. No, Papa. No, Papa. And I'm like, okay. Even though, you know, he, we're playing baseball now and I'm teaching him how to, you know, but he had, makes his own rules. So these kind of guys, but I think if you love it, if you're obsessed about it and you have to do it, you need to do it, then you should do it. It's not for everybody, but anything's possible. I mean, I, was a, I knew when I needed to do it and I said, I'm good at it and I did it because I thought, well, maybe I could make a living at it. I loved it. I didn't even think about the money. Years mm -hmm. later, when I had to make a living and support, then you're like, well, now I need a job. It's different. Like, but when you're chasing it, you're doing it. Do it for the right reasons. Mm. If you're doing it just to be famous or you're doing it just for that, then that's not what it's, why you should be doing it. That comes. You know, with success, the money comes. Things come. Yes. You know what I mean? But I, that's, that's what I would say. That if it's your passion, even if you're not very good, but if your passion, you're willing to work. Go ahead, but you know, you, you, but you gotta work. Like, you know, my son's got a friend right now, him and his friend wrote a really funny script, and the kid is funny. But then when he started to do the reading the other day, he tries to act, and I go, Ryan, you're fucking funny. You're funny, you don't yeah. need to act. Just be you. Yeah, just be you. You wrote the damn thing. You wrote the thing, just trust what you are. And then you gotta trust that. Because when I first started out, I didn't know shit. I mean, I was around people, and I'm like, Am I doing okay? I remember I was working with David Caruso. He goes, you're doing better than okay, Nick. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. I go, yeah, okay. I was doing things from, by accident. Maybe had good instinct. And then you realize that, yeah. And sometimes the more you know, the worse it is because then you go to your head. But, you know, you don't want to go to your head too much. You want to kind of stay, you know. But these people encourage you to lay like, you got it. You got something. And as long as you follow that, follow what you're feeling. But it's not for everybody. And it's way harder than it looks. Oh. I mean, you know that. It's way harder. Hey, uh, and that's well, why when you see a great performance, you go, wow. As somebody who's an actor, and you go, that, no. I could still be a fan. I uh, still am a fan. And there are some guys that are very competitive. I'm not that competitive. No, Feel great. Michael's great. It makes me better. Yeah, but I want to tell you, you know? this. I want to tell you I don't this. know if that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's perfect. But I want to tell you this. I have a friend of mine, Dan Gordon. I don't know if you know. He's a writer. That sounds good familiar. Writer. Yeah. So he writes this script for a, a movie called Let There Be Light. It was a kind of a faith-based film. He sends me the script. He says, Mike, I'd like to get your opinion of it. I read it. He said, what do you think about uh, this guy Vinny, Pastor Vinny? I said, well, you took my story, you know. It's <laughs> great, yeah. It's good. Good job. He says, well, we want you to play you. We want you to play that role. The pastor? Yeah. I said, I, I don't act. I said, I can't act. I, 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 it's not for me. I go to my wife, who normally tells me no on everything, and I say, you know what, he wants me to play that. I'm not an actor. I've done documentaries, but I'm myself. I can't act. So she said, I think you should do it. I said, no, I'm not going to do it. Forget it. So they get me on the phone, the director, the producer, and all of that, and they put the full court press on me. Why? I don't know. I'm not an actor, right? So at the end of it, I say, guys, I, it's very flattering. I appreciate it, but I can't do it. And Dan says, okay, no problem. We already spoke to your agent. We have your trailer ready. We'll see you on August 8th. And they all hang up on me, right? So I go there with my wife, and, and I said, guys, you don't understand. I can't remember all of these lines. I'm not good with... I said, when I go up on the stage and speak, you know, over 2,000 times, I never have notes. I can't read my own notes. So bottom line, I did the part. The movie was okay, I think. 
But I have so much respect for actors because I'm playing a role that was myself and I had a hard time. And for an actor to be somebody else, number one, right. you know, get into that character, remember all this dialogue that I just don't know how to do it. I yeah. swear to God. It's, it is, for all of you that don't understand it, it's, it's very hard. You've got to have passion for it. it is. You've got to really love it in order to do it well. I just did a sitcom, this NBC show. It's going to be on the phone with John Cryer. I forget the title. I don't know. It's a funny show. And the guy, this guy, Vic Levin, wrote me the role. He's a Yank, crazy Yankee fan. Because we did a pilot, and our pilot almost got on the air. I could have had my own show twice, but whatever. They picked the pilots they want. Anyway, the guy, Vic, wrote me this. I'm flattered. I came in as like a big speech, but it's a live audience. So I was like, I was like a nervous wreck. I said, I don't want to like have a brain fog because at this age now, things come in. I'm very like now scattered. I'm like, mm -hmm. I still have the ability, but my brain just is like sometimes it's there and then everything's out the window. <laughs> I so I was really I stressing out about this monologue. I killed it in front of the audience. And, and this guy, Michael Malley, the showrunner, he goes, man, you don't even know how funny you are. Just trust it. I was trying to, like, not go in there with a big head. And I just said, yeah, no, that's good. I'm glad he goes, I want you to be kind of like a pesci kind of guy. I said, well, I'm not going to be pesci I said, just be me. I said, but I, I thank you for the compliment. And, and, and I did a good job. But I'm telling you, I was exhausted from, like, anxiety. Because I kept, like, I said, I, I only going to have this one big scene. The other little bits are hard because they're, like, little. But the big one, I'm like, I got to knock this out. of. And the audience is there, even though they're taping it. They're freaking there. Yes. So I was like freaked out. I mean, I'll tell you another quick one. I worked with my brother in Rome on this, the name of the rose, biblical, hard material. And my brother was incredible. He got me a part as a Spanish whatever. It was not my thing. They put a costume on me, a thousand pounds, a, a beard. These Italians <laughs> made a beard. I was, I was complaining one time in the chair. I go, never again, never. And my brother goes, he's kind of intense, you know. He goes, don't say that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, Nick, don't say that. I said, I said, John, he said, no, that's not nice. I said, I understand. So he had all this hard dialogue, hard. I mean, he took the book and he rewrote the book into the script. And I said, how the hell is this guy remembering and relaxed? I said, John, how are you, how are you? He goes, what? I said, how are you doing this? He goes, Nick, it's in my body. Hmm. I go, huh? I'm trying to figure out what the hell he's talking about. Now, I, I get it now, I get it. In other words... Your brother's terrific. Well, he's, he's brilliant. Yeah. But he goes, thank you anyway. And he, he's a brilliant guy, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, he goes, it's in my body. It's in my body, Nicholas. He calls me Nicholas. My mm -hmm. own family calls me Nicholas. That is my name. <laughs> but anyway, you know. I, so he goes, it's in my body. It's in my body. And I'm like, it's in his body. And I'm like, I get it. He's worked on it so hard. He knows it so well. It's like the shit about the Yankees. Like, I know names. I know you give me initials. It's in my body. Or certain things like this monologue I did. I'm still thinking about the monologue because now I'm like, I've been living with the monologue, so I wish I could even do it over. I did a good job. But I mean, I, you know, the more you live with something, yeah. the best, like years ago when I was, we did this movie Jungle Fever, so early on, Spike gave me a part and put me in the Spike movie. Spike Lee, yeah. Yeah, he put me yeah. in a movie. Then he gives me a bigger part, but he let us have rehearsal, all this stuff. I played a kid like based on this Joey Farmer kid, crazy racist kid. And I came out of my shell, went toe-to-toe -to -toe with my brother, other people, and even my brother goes, he goes, man, your focus in the movie, Nick, was... I said, because I was ready. Mm. I did all this work that when I put the Sergio Tacchini suit on, I stepped on the set, it, 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 in the stupid candy store. I was ready to go. I didn't even have to think about it. Now with TV, you know, you, you got no time. You got to do it in, like you say, quick. Sammy the Bowl. It was quick. We had no time. So it's hit or miss. But when you have time and you prepare... And then you show up, you're like, you did your work. Now you can have fun. This other shit, it's hard. There's television. I mean, I've learned how to do it. But a lot of times, you know, so tough. you don't have that to say, hey, Mike, we're going to rehearse the movie. We rehearsed for three weeks, two weeks. They don't do that shit no more. De Niro did that when they did Raging yeah. Bull, probably prepared for like a year. You know what I mean? And, and it shows. I mean, I was a kid. We watched him film that scene. When he goes, hey, you want to meet my brother Jake? And mm. shaking a hand. And we're in the street, me and John. I was a kid. And I'm like, look at these guys. And my mouth was open. It's, you know. All right, let me ask you this. I'm, uh, last Saturday, I'm in the Beacon Theater. Okay, we're watching uh, Bronx uh, Tale. Bronx Tale. I'm sitting there. We're in the front row. Good movie, by yeah, the way. Good very good movie. movie. So good. Brilliant movie. Yeah. So some guy comes in, sits next to me. 
And then he starts tapping me on the shoulder. And William, the producer of Graves, Gravesend. The Mayo? The Mayo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's, a, he's a character. Yeah. Nice guy. He's hey, a Michael, hustler. Yeah. From Avenue U. We, yeah. we know a lot of the same yeah. people. Nice guy. He's really, a really, really nice. nice guy. So I said to him, Gravesend, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it, but Chaz told me watch season two because he's in it. Yeah, and I don't know you're in it. I was in the first season. Oh, you're in the I first did a season. little, just, just I did like one scene. I, I didn't do a lot, and he, he was like, "Hey, buddy, we're gonna bring you back," and all this. And I was like, <laughs> and then I ran into him recently. I said, "That's okay, Willie." Well, you know, I, I met him one time. He came into my trailer when I was doing the same. He was just hustling, but he's he's got a lot of things made. Yeah. So I give him credit. He's got a. Um, He's got a sense. He knows how to get money. He knows how to get all these people together. And uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, I, I give him credit. I don't know how he get, does it. I don't know where he gets his money from. And he got uh, all the, all the guys. Uh, yeah, you know, all neighborhood the, guys. All the neighborhood guys. That all the believe guys in him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that yeah. In him. And I mean, like, I try to get movie, you know, money for a movie, a good movie. I like, couldn't get, you know, why? Well, one time I had like forty grand, but it was like, it was more of a scam. You know, they were trying to entice me. Yeah, I mean it. It was like. That's another movie, like called The Making of a Movie That Never Got Made. I call that <laughs> Abracadabra. Like, you think you're going to make the movie? I thought I was going to make this movie for 20 years. This blessed me for all the movie. There's all yeah. kinds of... I mean, I did a reading years ago. Chaz was at the reading 20 years ago. My brother was there, Dave Strathairn, Dominic Cheney. All, I didn't even read. I just watched it because I was a young kid. I optioned this book, and Chaz liked it. Called me up out of the blue because it reminded him of... Uh, Bronx Tale, and mm. he goes, uh, hey, Nick Turturro, this is Chaz Pine. I said, oh, he says, I, I like your script, but it needs, you know, <laughs> really needs me to rewrite it. And I said, oh, really, Chaz? <laughs> but he goes, but I, 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 you can't afford me. I said, okay. Like, would, you, would you do the reading? <laughs> and, and he did the reading at Tribeca. We did the reading. He might remember that. Uh, he remembers a, you. It, it's a I good, it's a good movie. It's a good movie that Never got made, and now I'm old enough to actually play the dad. I could play. All right, all right, I could play the part Chaz read for. But isn't there? There's probably about ten thousand scripts about the movie that they were going to make that never got made. Which ones? <laughs> oh, what, Woody Allen, maybe. There's so many. Maybe, maybe, maybe. You I know, don't. People in this, they don't, don't understand. Know, like you know, I be honest with you. They're making a movie about my life or a TV series. Are you developing something? Yeah, it's develop. It's in development. I think it's going to go the distance. I really you feel. Have a good I never say. Uh, I, I think so. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. leave it at that. All right. And listen, I will. T I'll do this on the air, or whatever you would call this, on this platform. If we get to casting, you're gonna get my call, 100. percent I would, would love to. I'd be. Yeah, I'd I got a. I got a right character. Role. Nick, I got a character for you in mind. I'm not kidding. Okay, Frankie oh. G. Okay, if my okay. wife, she would know. Frankie, you you'd oh, be yeah? the perfect. Yes. Okay. 100. percent But. Uh, but let's see. It's, let's see if we get to that I point. Hope you yet. Get that. I hope you have a good writer. We got a great writer. That, that's that's important. We, we got a great writer. There's a got, great writer out there who's crazy. I know to get. Well, I don't. No, want to no, no. But here's, here's what nah, I want to nah. tell you. My wife. Oh, this movie. This movie. Because so many people have come to me over the past twenty years. But I said you don't understand this this process. Spielberg sometimes takes twenty years to get a movie made. It's just the way it is. You yeah. just never know. Oh, if I know. you get and people don't understand how it's big if you get something done. There's no question about it. This is a t it. television show? No, this, it's a TV series. It was made for a TV series. But now, all of a sudden, another big company got involved and said, we want it. We want to make a movie out of it. So it's a decision I have to make right now. I don't know. What would it be, a limited series? Like eight, uh, six, eight parts? It's designed now for uh, three seasons, ten episodes a season. They'll probably cut it down to six or whatever. But Yeah, yeah I would say go for a TV show. I would rather. movies come and go. They're easier to yeah. get made. But if you could get something on the air, I mean, I've had a few pilots that were on the air shot, and then I was developing something recently called Band of Idiots, a comedy with my son and this other kid. My brother liked it. He goes, I'll direct it. Mm -hmm. I'll direct it. If you, if you, so then we did these Zoom pitches. It's insane. You're on Zoom. You're on a box. And we were like, we I were know. funny and shit like that. And then my brother was like hijacking the Zoom. And he's autistic. So a lot of times we're like, John, we're trying to sell the freaking show. <laughs> Nobody cares about, you know, Shakespeare or this or that. You know, you know but he's like, let uh, me handle it. Because <laughs> he's like, I said, all right, all right. And then once I get going, he, he, he like, he would, you know, he would uh, like, stifle is, me. How hard is it to get your brother involved in something? If he likes it. Yeah. He, he'll look at things. He will look at things. Is he straight up with you, though? Hey, listen, man. I, I did two pilots years ago. This WB one was great. It was supposed to get on the air. It got me a deal at CBS. Long story. And then CBS, I got watered down, almost got on the air. 
And then I had this doorman idea. I pitched it with him at HBO, and, and the woman was a tough lady, this Carolyn Strauss lady. She gave us a deal. And he goes, well, let me write it. And I said, yeah, but I lived it. I was mm -hmm. like, you know, and I think we needed a buffer, like somebody to write it. You could be, you know, and instead he took like a year to turn in a script. By the time he did, turned your it. Your brother did it? Yeah. By the time he turned it in, it was like they lost all the, you, you can't, after you get a deal, you can't wait. A year. The woman was like, where's the script, Nick? Where's the script? I go, I know he's getting to, he's doing a movie right now. It, it didn't help me. Then we got another deal again at FX. Same shit. Let me write it. And I'm like, we didn't get a note. He goes, well, what does that mean, Nick? I said, that means they didn't like it. We didn't even get notes. We didn't even get fucking notes. I mean, like, as well as this doorman thing, I could redo it today, and I just have to play an older guy. I can't play Nick as a young kid. I could play the guy that's been a doorman for 40 years and make all my goofy friends. This was a show about dumb kids, dumb guys. My brother wanted to kind of write it a little more artistically, you know, and so when I, when I read the script, I was like, it's good, but it's like, you know, then I shot a, uh, I shot one time a spec pilot right in front of the St. Moritz, well, now it's a Ritz-Carlton, and he goes, he goes, I, I see you're, you're shooting this thing. Oh, he goes, how come you didn't use my script? I said, well, I, you know, I wanted to put it in my words. You know, I said, you know, I wanted to, you know, he goes, cause, you know I, I, I spent, you know, everything when he, he does is like, you know, I spent a lot of time on that. I said, I know, I know. But I la actually let him like edit it and he like chopped it up beautifully. Because his imagination, his writing sometimes, we don't always have the same sensibility. Mm -hmm. My sensibility is different than my brother. He's a genius. But my sensibility is more of like a regular guys on the street mm -hmm. could understand. And then my brother would come in and dissect it like a scientist. <laughs> it's, it's a funny combination. My, my dad, who was not in show business, but he was a builder, he was, he was a funny guy. And he didn't even know he was a funny He was just so intense. He was very funny, but so very... So you take after your dad? So. I, he does, kind of. Oh, yeah? But, I, but you know, my, I kind of knew how to tickle my, my father. My brother goes, he enjoyed you. Because they're a lot alike, you know, I think. But uh, it's very hard to get something on the air, something made. Like even Willie DeMeo, he, he's got the show out on platforms, but it's not, a, it's not an Amazon exclusive. Right. I'm telling you, it's so freaking hard. I mean, we had these other pictures for this other thing. Uh, no, it's a pass. It's a pass. There was one guy loved it. Peacock. Love it. I love it. Oh, well, you gonna want to buy it or why? You want to buy it right now in the room? Let's at least buy a pilot. Mm -hmm. And then they get, well, we get, let us get together. Yeah. That's bullshit. Years ago, I went in the room, happened. I pitched something when I was younger. Great, let's make a deal. Let's do it. Let's develop it. At least back then, if they yep. thought you were funny in the room, they were like, oh, you were on the drama, but you're really funny. I said, well, you know, I could be, you know, and then we couldn't get on the air. I almost got on the air. I mean, one time I got sick, I was like, the pressure. And then the guy at CBS goes, it's cute. That's why I hate that word cute. Like, I don't, I don't even want my wife to say, oh, you're cute. I'm either I'm hot or I'm, I'm not hot. Don't tell me I'm cute, because cute is a bad word. I said, shitty word. I go, we're dead. He said, it's cute, or we're not getting picked up. I go, it's cute, because you made it cute. You made it cute. You watered it down. They were like, is he going to be likable? <laughs> no, that's what they said at the table read, because I had a little edge to me, you know? And I said, yeah, I'm funnier when I'm when I'm edgy. I'm funnier if you don't do that, you know, but if you come in and try to stifle me, then you don't get the best of me. You let me just be, you know, like I just did this little movie, The Crusades, my son's friend made it for like a million bucks, and they don't know what they're doing, but I just went off the, the dial in the movie because they're just kids, and my shit is funny as hell in the movie. The movie's okay, but I did what, you know, they didn't know. I, nobody stopped me. I just, I just didn't throw... Right. I just went with it because I'm like, I got to elevate this because comedy is harder. Comedy is harder than drama. That's why the great ones that, like you say, De Niro or whatever, they can do both. You know, you like watch that movie, Dirty Grandpa. It's hysterical. I didn't know how funny that movie was. It is dirty, but it is funny as shit. It's De Niro and uh, Zac Efron. Oh, Zac Efron. And really? that chick from White Lotus who's kind of like funny and she's kind of sexy. Aubrey Plaza. Have you seen White Lotus? No. You should watch it. It's yeah. a very good. There's two seasons. Michael Imperial is yeah, in the about second. It. Yeah, the it's uh, he's good in it. I mean, uh, he's he's good in it. It's a good show. The first I like the first. The second one, some shocking shit in it. They yeah. really go. 
you know, uh, I don't like everything, but I did like that White Lotus. I think you'll... I, I'll I mean, watch it. Depends you're in your sensibility. I mean, you Well, know. I think my, my wife and the, some of them are watching it. Well, sometimes right? you watch things because your yeah. wife watches it. You yeah. know, it might be a chick show. Like I watched Sex and the City first. It took me a while to buy in. Then I was like, all right, all right, I get it. You're living your life over and watching these girls, you know, so then I bought into it. But it was a good show. It got better as it went along. I've watched uh, Emily in Paris, whatever. That's all right. It's cute. So, uh, let me. What do you got going on now? Yeah, What's I got next? this movie, Crusades, coming out. I got another thing, an action movie, BET Plus, called uh, They Call Her King. I play this kind of like cheesy lawyer, and it's a good, it's a good, good movie. Actually, we're getting good press on it. So that's that's another thing. Theaters. Uh, yeah, that's gonna be like yeah. quick theaters, then BET Plus streaming. Crusade will be little theaters in July, and then streaming. And then, you know, my son's got this thing called Bookies, which is really, really funny. And I don't even want to be in it. I actually, I had, they did a table read, and I'm like, I said, if I can help you get the money, would you let me direct it? <laughs> you know, because <laughs> um, I do want to direct something. Because uh, I've, I've, I've been creative. I've co-written pilots. I've co-written, I've collaborated. I'm not a full-fledged writer, but I can write when it's my voice and I'm collaborating. Right. Like this Band of Idiots show we wrote that we haven't gotten made yet. I'm not giving up on it. I might want to make that a sitcom because I think the sitcoms are coming back and I think... Would you like to meet Sammy? I would. I would like to meet that guy. I mean, I, if he was open to it. I'll make way. sure I'm there with you. Just okay. <laughs> Maybe we could do it over pizza or something because I like pizza. Yeah, he'll be but, all right. No, Sammy's I, a good guy. I like, I like to meet him. I, I've always been... I wanted to meet him years ago and then, and then you know, De Niro was like, you know, we, we can't get to him, Nick. We can't yeah. get to him. And I said, yeah, yeah, it's so funny. Now, years later, he's a star on the internet. Yeah. And he's a great, great storyteller, as well as you are, a different style. Mm -hmm. uh, I like, you know, it's funny how a lot of these guys that are in that life now are all like, isn't is that, Crazy. that's kind of wild, huh? Wow. That's like, that could be a movie in itself. Like all these ex-guys <laughs> yeah. that were in that life now Beautiful. are like celebrities on a different platform. I don't know, I'm not saying that you want to make a movie out of that. <laughs> but I'm just saying. It, it, it could be, you know, it could be like, you know. Who would have thought? We, my, uh, my partner there, I, I didn't want to go on YouTube, you know, but when the pandemic hit, I had all these speaking engagements canceled. Yeah. He said, what are we going to do? I said, nothing. I'm going to stay home. It's the first time I've been home right. in 20 some odd years. No, we got to do YouTube. Like, nah, I don't want to do YouTube. No, we got to do it. We got to do it. And we got lucky, you know, yeah. blew up. Well, you know, you come across nice. You come across as like a producer. I mean, I, I was like, that guy said, he, he could be a movie producer, Michael. I, I said, don't you know, know if that's a compliment or not. But. No, it's a compliment. <laughs> I mean, a nice yeah. producer. Yeah. I, I didn't mean it like in a no, bad I, way. I, I meant it like, you know, you, you seem like a guy who could lead. You know what I mean? You know, you see some guys that are like followers and there's leaders. And I meant like, I'm like then I found out you did produce some movies. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, it makes sense. I could kind of see that he's, you know, more, a little more polished than... Uh, Let me tell you, I was producing movies when you could really make money producing movies. Did, way back were you when. involved in that faith-based uh, No, 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 stuff? no. I had, uh, way back when, I was producing all these exploitation films, horror movies. Oh, okay. You know, they I make had, money. Uh, yeah, I had a deal with Vestron Video where we had an output deal with them, and they practically covered the cost of every movie just by giving it to them for video. Right. You know, and at that time we were bicycling the prints, 300 prints across the country. We made a lot of money, a lot of money. That's why I stayed with it. Yeah. And then I bought a little distribution company that I had you know, out here in, uh, um, where was it, in L.A. somewhere. And uh, we did very well for about three or four years. And then, you know, industry changed. I got in trouble, and that was the end of that. Right. That's how all my story ends. I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but what about now? I mean, now, 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 now when people good. see you, are you like a celebrity now? Well, you know, I... I don't want to call myself not a celebrity. celebrity. Maybe that's the wrong word. No, I'm going to tell you this, Nick, and this is the truth. I, I'm fairly well known. I have a lot of publicity throughout my lifetime. A lot of bad, good stuff now. But there is no platform on earth like YouTube. I'm telling you. Yeah. If, my wife will tell you. I went to the United Kingdom. I was like a rock, rock star there. Yeah. People coming out of pubs, grabbing me from taxi cabs, all YouTube. Wow. If you get known on YouTube. It's powerful. The other night at the Beacon Theater, we couldn't get out of there. You would have thought I was in the movie. Yeah. Everybody coming up and can I take a photo of YouTube? I watch all your content. So who told you Everybody. to be on YouTube? Who? This guy sitting in front of you right there. Him? <laughs> yeah. He was the one. We got to start a YouTube channel. Then my wife, you know, encouraged me. She does all the video. I mean, all the filming you see now, she does. Then we I, have already. You always wonder, like, who's beyond? Like, my son made a star out of this kid that lives with us for 25 years. Calls himself White Claw Gabe, but now he's Uncle Gabe. You've seen him? 
little Filipino kid. He's like on the spectrum. Yeah. And uh, he goes, fuck, baby, fuck. And he, but he's funny. And he was always funny even before the, he had the gimmick. Now he's got like a gimmick and my son like made a star out of him. And now White Claw has no, showed him no love. So he's like, well, fuck them. I'm just going to be uh, Uncle Gabe. And because there's this podcast that loves him. H3, and they're like, you know, who the fuck is Uncle Gabe? Who is Uncle Gabe? <laughs> and, and he's like, I couldn't be happier for him because he was my stand-in on Sammy the Bull, on movies, other mm. things, and he's just like, yeah, yeah, he's like the Rain Man, but he's really, like, brilliantly funny. And now he's got, like, a, you know, he's made a business out of it, so I'm happy for him, you know, except that, like, when he doesn't get noticed, he's, like, looking to get, I'm like, Gabe, mm. Just let them, when they know you, they know you. I go, don't get mad if they come to me. I've been in the public eye 30 years. So don't get, not everybody's going, that's not my audience. They, the kids love this guy, you know? But it, it's fascinating to see these people that, you know, they've it's a whole crazy. new. YouTube has made stars out of so I'm, many people. I do TikTok. I mean, you know, it's stupid stuff. My son is brilliant with it. He's got it. He's just yeah. got it. You, you know? You got to be, you got to be into that or young. It's not for me. I mean, I'm. I don't, the technology of it, I don't even... So do you want to produce it. anymore? Do you, would you produce a movie or no? If it's Maybe. something you like. It would have to really, you know... It, you'd it would, have to yeah. like it. Yeah, I'd have to really like yeah. it. Yeah, because you know a few people. I'm not saying your own yeah. money, but, you know... Yeah, I'd have to like it. Like yeah. That. I enjoyed it when I was doing it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I'll never forget one movie I did with uh, Linda Blair on Savage Streets. That was a headache because it, every day was another issue with her. Oh, with Linda was Blair? After, she did the, after the Exorcist. Oh, God, it, I had to keep coming down here, calming her down. She had a problem with the director. It was like babysitting for her. Right. But we got through it. And the movie is a cult movie right until now. It is, right? Yeah, I get a, I get a check every quarter from that movie. You Some still movie, get a royalty? Yeah, still. It's 30 some odd years later. Savage. I know that one, Savage Street. I made a movie, Mausoleum, which is the first movie I got into. Long story short, a friend of mine says, send, send me 83,000. We're going to make this horror movie. It was a guy that I sent out from New York because he was going to get killed. I sent him out here, not to get in trouble, right? And uh, we're going in a movie business. He sent me 83000 I said, what do you know about movies? Oh, I got a script. I got no problem at all. I said, P.S., a million dollars later, I make this horror movie called Mausoleum that didn't scare anybody but me. I, just, <laughs> that, I couldn't believe it. That became a cult film also. I get a check every quarter from that. Too, and that also. did well? Again, because we knew the system. We bicycled it around. Vestron Video picked it up. So we made our money back. Right. But it's still getting royalties 30-some-odd years later. It's a cult film. And people go on, oh, I saw your film, Mausoleum. It was so good, man. It was great. The worst movie ever. <laughs> but they loved it. I'm but they loved it. it. As yeah. long as there's an yeah. audience for Who it. Who knows? You know, there are some movies you did, you can't find them anywhere. Like this no. Hellside Stranglers thing I did. I can't find that. Maybe it's too insane. Who but it, I don't know. Who knows? It's an underground movie, you know. I mean, I can't figure you everything out. No, no, it's out. a crazy bit. Another movie I made, Gates of Hell. Same thing, you know. Crazy movie. I think I forget we... Paid like a hundred grand for that at the time. The movie did like three million dollars. Wow. Yeah. Back then it was different business. Yeah. Way different business. You could have yeah. made money in this. Yeah, we, you we could make really a lot well. of money. You could still yes. do good in a horror movie. Yeah, horror is always or an action genre, movie. If that you genre is always there. You know? I know. But everything's so expensive today to make a film. You know, to make a decent one. Back then it was different. But yeah, but yeah, you with the technology you could shoot shit today. Uh, yeah. You know, people, they have award-winning movies that are on, they shoot on an iPhone. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of ways to skin a cat. Absolutely. You know what I mean? I mean, uh, you Absolutely. may not be able to attract the talent because you can't afford them. But like I even tell my son, I said, if you can get it made, you get it made. And he's like, well, well we could do it for $3 billion. Never mind that. You know, I said, you can do yeah, it for right. what you could do it for. Absolutely. Don't get a big head, you know, right away. He's, uh, I said, you know, if you want to play the part. Well, let me let me leave you with this. Right. I, uh, I am... Uh, very discouraged about our Yankees. Oh. They have a shot not even to make the playoffs. If they don't get something going, you know, at least by the All-Star break or right after, we're, we're in trouble. We're in too tough a division. I agree. I agree. And, I, and I, I hate to say this, but maybe they shouldn't make the playoffs. Maybe they should take a good look in the mirror and say, this isn't working. Exactly. This is not working. And I'm not saying, you know, listen, they got to take some accountability. The ownership, Cashman... These guys, Absolutely. they did not do anything to make this roster better. They got swept out last year. They've been declining since 17. 17, they had a nice feel. And even 18, 19, they had injuries they could sustain. Now, when one guy goes down, the whole team is so exposed. Exactly. Same formula in the last three years that Doesn't didn't work. work. 
and they keep going back to it. Can't home run or nothing. You can't win championships. You look at these teams: the Astros, the Rays, the Braves. They got a good nucleus. They yes. they don't just. It's not just it's not home, home run, run a bus. Listen, I love the home run, but it's. You can't live and die. You can't live and die. Something's got to change. And they got to listen to some of the fan base. They'll be like, oh, well, these disgruntled fans, I'm probably one of them. These crazy oh, fans. Oh, two of them. Me yeah, too. and maybe you too. So Everybody now. Maybe they should upset. listen. I don't know about this guy, Hal. I mean, I, I don't know. He's nothing like his father, George. I don't no. know the guy. Oh, I wish we had George now. He'd have but shooken up this team. He would have fired him. Forget, fired him. Fired everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, loved him. Go right down on the field and call out the worst, the best player. He didn't care. It he, was his money. He didn't care. I know, and he wanted to win. Yeah, you know, he wanted to. And even though he didn't always go about it the right way, he was great for the fans. He was good for the fans. He cared about winning. And, I know, and putting a quality product on the field. And now we've and become lost. like satisfied with just with that new. We stadium. made the playoffs. Yeah, we made the playoffs. So what? So what? I mean, they don't have to win every year, but you can't be like, where well, the Yankees twenty-seven. Yeah, I understand. But we haven't won in a long time. It's been dry, and it's not. It's not gonna. It's gonna be a long time unless you realize what's going on, and build the. They might have to blow this shit up and give Judge some help because one guy can't. He's great, but he can't. And now they won't even let you know about his toe. He's hurt. They're not sure. letting you know. No, I think he's going to be out for quite some. Time. I got to take it easy because I, I get so emotionally, and I'm like, <laughs> then I've I. have seen some of you. <laughs> yeah, it's too much. My wife gets mad, no, and I gotta, get in trouble at home, relax. and then, and then I. Last week I was sick and I was, she was like, because you're screaming all the time. They don't care about me. They go have a hot meal. They're laying in bed with some broad. I mean, they don't, they don't care about realize. me. You know what I mean? I, I'm just a fan. You know what I mean? I'm not out to hate on them. I just expect more, you know? Let's anyway, hope that's all we can do. I know. I mean, did you go to any of the Yankee Dodger games? No, I didn't go. Yeah. I, I, uh, I went to two. two I, well, I, was in, I, was, I wasn't here when they played. And then, unfortunately, I was in New York when they played, uh, who they played recently, I don't know, but I couldn't go, yeah. whatever. Oh, they played the Mets, and I oh. couldn't go. Yeah, I couldn't go. I was and they split, they split that together. series. Should have won both games. I know, whatever. I know they should have won. All right, so that's it. Nick Totoro, as you can see, very passionate guy, loves the Yankees, great at his craft. You got to look in. He's got some great stuff out there. I was shocked, too, to see all the work that he's done, and it's all great. Watch him in The Longest Yard. He was hysterical in that. You know, good in all these movies that he does. And listen, he did play my friend Sammy Gravano. I didn't give it a great, a great review when I watched it, but now seeing Nick and meeting him again, I'm going to go watch the movie again. I may review it a little bit differently this time. Of course, I know Sammy. I told him maybe I'll introduce you to Sammy, and I'll make sure that I'm there just in case Sammy gets a little bit Sammy-like, you know. Anyway, it was great. You know, good guy, and now we got a good friendship going. So that's it for today. How do I always leave you? Same way, not going to change. Be safe. Crazy stuff happening here. I was in New York last week. I don't even want to get into that. Ladies, be safe. Have eyes in the back of your head. Wherever you're going, look around in the parking lot. You've got to be careful today. Be healthy. Take care of yourself. So important. We have a shot to live long in this life, but you got to take care of yourself. And yes, God bless you. You know I mean that. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless. See you next time.